This is video number 24 from digital-university.org. Um, in this video, we're going to look at the nodal technique to solve different types of circuit problems with. And to get us started, we have a relatively simple circuit. A node is just simply a junction of two or more branches in the circuit. And here in this simple circuit, there are two nodes, up here and down here. And here you see that this node is grounded. So what we do is we consider this top node to be at a certain voltage potential. We don't know what it is, so we just call it V1. And before we proceed further, if you're having difficulty being convinced that there's only a single node here at the top part of the current, as there is at the bottom part here of the diagram, let's look at the same circuit. Here it is right here, the very same circuit. And we can just redraw it like this. Because here, this is, these are just conductors. So we can draw it like this, where here's our single node up here. Here is the R1 resistor, the R2 resistor emanated from the node, and here is the current source connected to that single node. And again, here, down at the bottom, there's another single node, and that's grounded. And here we're saying, well, let's assume then this is at some potential. We don't know what it is. So we'll just call that V1. And as we know from Kirchhoff's laws, is that when you have a node, the net current uh, flow through that node is zero. Now, what we're going to do is, because this is where a lot of the textbooks do it, here we know for certain that there's a current that's flowing into the node. We don't know what these currents are here and here. So a lot of textbooks set their problems up assuming that any unknown currents flow away from the node. So we'll do it like that too. And then we just simply sum all those currents and we add them to zero. And currents that are going into the node, um, we, denote, we denote those with a minus sign. So here for this node, there would be minus one amp of current flowing into it. And then the current flowing, we're assuming for the moment, away from the node through this resistor, well, that current would be equal to V1 divided by the value of this resistor, V1 divided by 12. And now for the current that we're assuming is going in this direction away from the node through this resistor, here we have the battery source of 24 volts. So this, of course, would be forcing the current in this direction. And again, just for the moment, we're assuming that this unknown current here is flowing away from the node. And it would then, the current going through that resistor would be equal to V1 minus 24 volts. So let's just get the circuit set up here. Here we're saying this is our single node. And here we know there's one amp of current flowing into the node. It flows in, so we denote that with a minus sign. And then for the unknown currents, for the moment, we're assuming all of them flow away from the node. The amount of current that goes through this resistor, here, this is grounded, so we just take that as zero volts. So the amount of current flowing through this resistor would just simply be plus V1 divided by 12. And again, for the moment, we're assuming that this unknown current right here is going out of the node. And the amount of that current would be V1 minus 
24. divided by the value of the resistor, 6 ohms, and this equals 0. So here for this circuit, we just have a single node to deal with. And let's see what this comes out to. Here we have V1 over 12. And here we have V1 over 6. And then this we can take to the right side of the equation. That becomes plus. Here we have 24 divided by 6. That's minus 4. Take it over to this side. And we have this equation. And 1 6, that's the same as 2 12s. So here we have three twelves, or that's one fourth. So one fourth times V1 equals five. So V1 equals 20 volts. So up here, this is at a potential of 20 volts. So now we can pretty much figure out the rest of the circuit here without much problem. Again, we chose a, a straightforward um, example to get us started. We know V1 is equal to 20 volts. So let's just make some room. So the amount of current going through resistor R2, that is going to equal 20 divided by 12, or that would be 5 thirds amps, and this current would be going downward. Okay, now notice here for resistor R1, here this is at a plus potential of 24 volts, and this is at a potential of 20 volts, so the current for resistor R1 is not going away from the old, from the node, it actually is going to be going in this direction, and the magnitude of that current will be 24 volts minus 20 volts divided by the resistance and that's going to be 4 6 so that's 2 thirds amps and again this is going in the upward direction and here both of these are at a positive voltage so the current goes from a high potential to a low potential, this you would take at zero volts, so this would tend to push the current this way through the resistor, but this has a positive polarity, so this tends to push it this way, so these two voltages oppose each other, so it's 24 minus 20 divided by the amount of the resistance, and that gives us two-thirds of an amp flowing through this resistor in an upward direction. So really that's all we have to say for this video. We just wanted to, um, to get us started. We'll choose a couple of straightforward examples and then later in the uh, uh, other videos we'll consider circuits where we have multiple nodes and it gets to be a little bit more challenging for us to handle. But that's it for this um, video. Again, the uh, technique is we'll look at our circuit we want to determine where the nodes are and then at the nodes we assume that each one is at a certain potential an unknown potential and then we use Kirchhoff's current laws to set up an, a current equation each particular node and then so 
a lot of times, of course, we'll have multiple nodes, so we'll have multiple equations with multiple voltage unknowns, but we can solve for those unknown voltages. Then once we do that, we can determine the occurrence through the respective parts of the circuit. Okay, that's it for this video. Come back and join us for some more videos, and we'll solve some more problems.